Hi there, this is Lucius LaFramboise from ENG Suite, and today we are taking a look at input boxes in Microsoft Excel VBA. So this is the master guide, everything that you need to know about input boxes. Um, all of this will be broken down, um, chopped out into short videos, that way you can reference them easily in a playlist here in the description. But to start, we first need to learn how to create an input box. So what we're going to do here is we're first going to create a sub. And this sub, we will just call it test because this is just a, a test document to learn. And the first thing that we need to do is create our application.input box. So just like it sounds, we hit application.input box. And then you'll notice we have only one required uh, one required argument here and that is prompt so in here we're gonna have to put in a, uh, a string and we're gonna say um, test input and now we'll just hit this uh, play button here to run this sub and we will select test awesome there we go we have our test input right there the only problem is we aren't doing anything um, with what we input so now we have to learn how to use the input from our input box. So first thing we're going to do is let's create um, an output variable called output and we will make it a variant because there's a few different data types we can use and we want the flexibility now. We will say output equals application dot input box. Then we need to somehow access this to prove that this is working so let's for now just message box our output. Awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So here we are, test input. Um, this is a test. And we are creating a message box that says exactly what I just typed in. Awesome. So we've learned how to create an application that input box and we've learned how to use the output now we're gonna start looking at some of those optional parameters because this is where we can really step up our game so the first thing you'll notice here is title and for title what we're gonna type in is we're just gonna say um, oh test input okay let's see what happens if we run the title now up here used to say input but now it says test input so anything you type in for the title will now show up in that little title bar kinda cool alright um, next option is going to be default so this is the default value that will show up in your input box so just to start I will say default and if we run this macro again, now you see our default value is default. If I just hit enter, it passes that default value through. Or I can run this and I can modify it and we get that value through. The next parameter here is left and then after that is top. So these are kind of related parameters. And um, something to know is that left specifies your X position, top specifies your Y position but this doesn't actually work with application.input box. If you want your left and top to work, um, what you're actually going to have to do is just call input box. So let's go ahead and see what they do. So for x we'll do 0 and y we'll do 0 just to see where we're at. So let's try running this. And it is right up there in the top left corner. Um, okay, let's try 100 and let's try 500 and see where we get here. 100 and 500. Awesome. Um, looks like we're using points, so we're going to have to go a little bit bigger. Let's try multiplying that by 10 and then running it. And as you'll see, um, we can change the default location, um, but it does not impact a user's ability to move it somewhere else. So that is just if you want to specify where it starts. Now, as I mentioned, this actually does not work if we use application.input box. Let's try running that, and you'll see it just ends up right there. So that means that these are totally useless. So after left and top, you will see these two here that seem slightly related, help file and help context. And these are actually not useful at all. Um, I have done plenty of research 
and I can't seem to figure out how to get these two to work um, and really what what their purpose is um, is in general. Um, you know, most people that are going to be using your documents, um, the goal is that they shouldn't need too much help. That's the kind of the goal of an input box is it tells them exactly what to do. Um, so instead, we are going to jump right on to our last parameter, which is type. Okay, so you'll notice though that left top help file help context ID are all basically useless for an application dot input box input box. And we so we're gonna jump to type, but in order to do that we have to either do a bunch of commas or we can do this really really cool thing um, and we can choose which um, which parameter we're typing in by putting in the name of it colon equals and then here's where you would put your value so for now we'll just do zero and let's try running this and it works just like normal awesome so if you notice there here let's run that again it's showing us equals and then some quotations and the value and that's because type zero is a formula so let's learn a little bit about the type parameter So type is really the most useful of all of the parameters that you would probably use in an input box besides prompt, which is required. And it specifies the data type that this input box is taking. And you've got a few options here. Um, link in the description to Excel's um, actual documentation where you can see these. Otherwise, the chart is here on the screen. So type 0 is formula, and it's probably one of your most useful ones. And we'll get into the use cases a little bit later. Um, but it's kind of like range where you can um, take in a range object and do some math. Um, but it's a little bit more useful because you won't get type errors if you put in um, a number or a text. So it's kind of your... Um, your catch-all so it's really cool um, let's take a look at a quick example so in here if we were to hit enter we would just get it uh, a function that returns that string um, let's try typing in a number you get a function that returns the number this is where it gets a little bit weird so let's try running this um, and let's actually go into the workbook and let's do that times that and you'll see everything looks normal here but if we hit OK we get a different formula. We get equals R1C1 times R1C3. So that stands for your row 1, column 1, which is A1, and your row 1, column 3, which is C1. And we'll get into, in another video, how to actually use these formulas being output. But for now, let's keep talking about all of the different um, data types we can take in. So a value of 0 um, is a formula data type. If you were to put in a value, which we just saw, if you were to put in a value of 1, you get a number. So let's take a look at that. So in here, if we hit OK, all of a sudden we get number is not valid. And it lets us retry. So now let's do 0. We get 0. Awesome. So that's one way um, of making sure that somebody inputs a number. And then here we can type in 2. And 2 is text a string so let's let's try running that and let's just use our default and it works um, but let's run it again and let's type in um, let's type in a number it still works because it can read a number as a string so number is very very um, strict string allows you to basically type anything you want um, so that's kind of cool uh, four is a logical value so let's try that and let's try this. Logical value is not valid. OK, let's type in true. There we go. We get true. But what happens if we maybe don't make it all caps? It still works. Let's try some random capitalizations. It doesn't matter. As long as it's true or false, it works. But now in, in some logical conventions, you can type in a 1 or a 0. In that case, 1 is 0. I mean, 1 is true, 0 is false. Um, what happens if you just type in T? Well, you're going to get logical value is not valid. So make sure that you have either true or false or 0 or 1 for that type 4. So 
Now type eight, and this is really where we um, get the maximum use out of application input box. I personally love it. Um, it is really great because you can do a range. So this is really cool. Let's take a look at what happens. So if we hit OK, the reference you typed is not valid or you did not provide a reference where one was required. So this wants us to select a range. And we can actually click and select in Excel and we get a type error. And that is because we can't message box a range. So that's pretty cool. But this output is actually a range and we can use that range just like we would if it were being input into a function. So we will get into that later um, when we start using this. This is just an intro, everything you need to know. So type 16 is a little weird. It's an error value. I personally have not been able to get it to work. Um, I've done some research. Uh, to me, it just doesn't seem that helpful um, because if you're doing something like formula or range, you'd be able to do some error checking there. Um, so we're just going to move right along. Okay, now our last one is 64, an array of values. Let's take a look at how this works. So if we run this, and let's just hit enter to see what happens again. Again, we get array value is not valid. But what happens if we select just a couple of ranges, enter, we again get that error on our message box because we cannot message box an array of values. Um, array just is very similar to that. Um, range object except it pulls the values okay awesome so we've really learned all you need to know about how to use application input box and we're gonna start um, doing some more um, important things with it in future videos I just wanted to do a quick introduction that way in the next videos we can start really putting it to use thank you so much for watching have a great day, and please do something awesome.